Hey guys, Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina with another live stream fishing show tonight. We are going to be talking near shore, offshore, fishing tips, tricks, and more. We're going to be answering your questions. We are going to be giving away free stuff. So stay tuned. We got a special guest in the studio, Will McClure, and uh, we're going to get started shortly, guys. How you doing guys? Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina with another Sunday night live stream show. It is Sunday night, November 17th at 8.28 p.m. We are about to get our live stream show started up here, folks. Uh, we got a good show lined up for you tonight. We're going to be talking near shore and offshore fishing tips, tricks, and more. We're going to be talking about our brand new website. We're going to be sharing our Hubbard's Marina family secret recipe for grilling and broiling fish. Uh, we are going to be talking about our upcoming schedule release, our loyalty program called the Regulars Club. We're going to be giving away our veterans trip for those veterans who entered our uh, Veterans Day giveaway, we are going to be giving away that 39-hour trip for the veterans. Plus, we have our normal live stream giveaways. So, lots of good stuff going on tonight. We've got Will McClure in studio tonight. How you doing, Will? Uh, pretty good, pretty good, D. Will is back. For those of you who don't know, Will is the deep water uh expert when it comes to our 39 hour and 44 hour trips and lots of different trips will i mean you do a lot of the 12 hour extremes and stuff now too huh yeah i've been working some of the extreme trips during the week because we don't have as many overnighters during the week this time of year yeah yeah and uh uh you've been doing some extremes you've been doing some private charters so you do a lot more than just the 39-hour trips uh, like a lot of people know you, you're you famous for because uh, of those videos on our Facebook page and stuff. So Will's got a lot of knowledge. You've been doing it, what, 16 years now? Yeah, I think this is 16 years coming up here. That's a long time to be doing those 39-hour trips. So uh, definitely stay tuned, guys. We're going to be talking to Will about those long-range trips in uh, – he just got in from one of those long range trips this morning. It was a little bit of a special trip, huh? <laughs> yeah, there. It, as you guys know, it was windy on Saturday. At least if you live here in Florida, it was windy out there and uh, big seas, cold. But uh, we caught fish and got through it. You know, there you go. So we're gonna be talking a little bit about that trip as well, guys. So definitely stay tuned tonight. Got a great show lined up for you. We are gonna get started here shortly. Keep in mind, while you're watching, don't forget to uh, share our video. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook, share our video with your friends on your timeline. Share it with your favorite fishing club. Uh, help us spread the word there, guys. Also, don't forget to comment where you're watching from. Uh, and don't forget to like the video. If you're watching on YouTube, also don't forget to comment where you're watching from. Um, don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube and give us a thumbs up on the video. We would appreciate it. So, uh, we are going to get started here in just a minute or two. Just need to get a few things lined up here and we're going to get rolling. Hopefully you have some questions. Remember guys, you can bring your questions and just pop them into that comment box below. And we're going to be trying to get to your questions throughout the video live, answering them. What we don't get to live, we'll go back through and ask or uh, answer them the best we can uh, in a timely fashion over the course of the next 24 hours as well. Don't forget, you can also text us if you uh, the phone number that you normally call, the 393-1947. That's a 727 area code. So that's 727-393-1947. Uh, that's our main office number. You can also text at that number now. So you can text in your questions as well. Uh, make it a little easier for you to reach us and uh, stay in contact. Whether it's during the show or if you have questions about an upcoming trip or whatever. You can now text uh, myself 
and all of us here at Hubbard's Marina through our main office number, so it makes it a little easier. All right, you ready, Will? All right, let's do this. Let's get this show on the road. Uh, let's find if I can find the right buttons here. <laughs> there we go. How are you guys doing tonight? Hopefully, I was waiting for them to respond. <laughs> it's been a long day. You're pretty tired too, huh? Yeah, I slept a little bit today after this trip, but we had a bouncy overnight trip this weekend. Yeah, man, that was a really rough trip. Uh, I mean, they were forecasting like six to eight foot seas Friday night, and then it was supposed to die down slowly to like a four to six foot sea. And uh, when I woke up there early, early Saturday morning to call the radio shows and I pulled up that south uh, buoy, it was showing 10.5 foot. And I was like, oh, gosh, hopefully they're doing all right out there. <laughs> and luckily, shortly after I saw that, Garrett called on the sat phone and he said you guys were kind of picking fish. Uh, but and he seemed like oddly cool, calm, like, hey, this is all right. This is normal. So I was like, oh, well, that sounds good. So it seems like you guys were able to fish through that rough condition without uh, any problems. Yeah, we, we fished through it. We uh, we got there. It wasn't that rough when we got there, three to five or four to six, and we caught probably 50 mangroves on the first spot, and then the weather was picking up the whole time and uh, slowly progressed throughout the day, and so we just took a slow pound of the whole fit and just never backed down. Yeah, and normally on those type of trips – you see some type of like, all right, here's where it gets real big, and then all of a sudden it slowly gets better. Or it starts out nice, and then it slowly gets a little bit worse. This was just like, it got rough quick and then stayed rough the entire trip kind of thing, huh? Yeah, you're right. That In most trips, if you guys have been out on a rough weather trip, it's not rough the whole time. Mm -hmm. And this one, it was pretty rough when we got there, and then real rough the rest of the trip. Yeah, yeah, I mean... Seven to ten foot, pretty solid throughout the whole trip. So definitely a pretty epic 39-hour trip, but they caught some nice fish. Yeah, we caught fish, and uh, the um, the hardest thing to do was to hold, you know, make sure your weight's on the bottom with the boat going up and down. The fish were biting. Yeah, uh, and that's, that's uh, true of almost any trip, uh, whether it's two to three foot seas or it's mm -hmm. ten foot seas. I think that's a really, really important thing to kind of hammer home on is making sure that your lead's holding bottom. Yeah. Yeah, you can't just stand there with your rod bouncing, especially in a sea like that. You have mm -hmm. to either have a little slack in your line or uh, or move your rod back and forth yeah. with the sea. I call it dancing with the boat. Mm -hmm. You got to dance with the boat. <laughs> John Martin is good at that. John Martin. <laughs> He's the expert at the dancing with the boat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely one of those things. This this trip, uh, this trip was definitely a bumpy one, but I mean, we did, uh, in my opinion, a pretty darn good job trying to warn people. We sent out two. We called them like Thursday or Wednesday, perhaps. We called them about the rough weather. We sent out an email about the rough weather Thursday. We uh, talked to them about it when they arrived on Friday. So, I mean, we had like forty almost 50 people signed up for this trip. We only left the dock with like 34 because uh, our weather warnings were so uh, strong that uh, I think a lot of people backed off, which I think the people that we had left, I mean, they, they, they enjoyed wanted to go it. fishing. Yeah. Yeah. They enjoyed it. I, I don't think, but one or two, three people really got seasick. I think the people that were left on the trip were just hardcore anglers that were about it. And sometimes you've booked that trip and you're from out of state or from wherever you are and you're not canceling that thing as long as we're going to go, you know, you're going to yeah. go. So it was manageable. It wasn't unsafe at any time. You know, we needed, there were times where it was best off you go inside and sit down and wait till we start fishing again before you uh, come Move outside. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's one of those things. I think it comes down to the type of trip too. Cause like, for example, a five hour trip, if it's, four foot seas we might have to cancel a five hour trip or if it's like a 12 hour extreme where we're on a smaller boat that's going super fast yeah. if it's three and a half foot seas we might have to cancel that trip but when you're talking about one of these 39 or 44 hour trips these are long range advanced angler trips i mean you don't necessarily book a 40 or 39 hour trip unless you're kind of serious about fishing. yeah you've devoted some time and effort to yeah. that trip and honestly, the fish bite, a lot of times they bite better when it's rough. Yeah. I mean, the last three overnight trips in a row have been 
pretty bumpy weather. Mm -hmm. Seems like they've gotten bumpier and bumpier. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, the cold fronts. (laughs) Yeah, but uh, it definitely, the bite has been getting pretty good. Yeah, the mangrove bite's better than it has been in the past few months, and the gags are coming in at the same time. Uh, This trip, we didn't get all the way up there to where we wanted to get to the gags, and I would be surprised if we don't get up there this weekend. Yeah. On this weekend's overnight, or we're going to go gag fishing, I think. Yeah, and this weekend looks a little bumpy, but it definitely looks manageable. It's only like three to four foot. So oh, yeah, I haven't even checked yet. <laughs> oh, yeah. You don't, you don't even care anymore? Yeah. <laughs> once once you're in 10 footers, it's just like all downhill from here, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, that makes sense for sure. I did see someone mention one of my favorite topics, uh, and Will gets annoyed probably because I mention it so much, those venting tools on those long-range trips. It's important to make sure you have your venting tools on those long-range trips. And if you do book a 39 or a 44-hour trip with us, we talk a lot about those venting tools and making sure that you have uh, some type of device, whether a venting tool or a descending device, to make sure those fish get back down to bottom. Because uh, this time of year, when it's colder, you don't really run into that problem as much. Uh, you got to be pretty deep to run into that venting problem, uh, like 110, almost 120 foot. Yeah, and we're we're fishing right on that edge right now, and and we catch a lot of small red grouper out there. Mm-hmm. A lot of them. Like sometimes you'll stop on a spot, and the first three or four fish everybody catches around are small red groupers, and you got to a lot of times you got to vent that fish and throw him back. Yeah, especially if he's throat hooked, and you know you struggled with the hook for a minute, and then throw him back without venting him, he'll float away just because he doesn't have much uh, strength left. You know. Yeah. So. And those small red grouper are the ones that we need to survive uh, and get bigger and enter our fishery. So. Really important you have a venting tool with you to make sure you can release that excess air pressure buildup, allow that fish to get back down to bottom, and uh, survive another day. I mean, Will does a really good job on those 39 and 44 hour trips on the ride out to talk about uh, how to properly uh, how to properly vent a fish. And during the seminar, uh, they go over it a little bit, and then throughout the trip is kind of when you really explain it as you're fishing, right? Yes, yes. Because, I mean, it's hard to just sit there and explain how to vent to fish. It's a lot easier to show you how to vent to fish while we're actually fishing. Um, but we definitely have some helpful tools out there. Uh, Salt Strong help us create a, uh, a little page on how to vent snapper, grouper, and bottom fish. Uh, and there's got, they've got some good instructional information. Uh, it's just right on saltstrong.com you can type in how to vent a fish and it's got a diagram of where to put that venting tool basically closer to the pectoral fin uh closer to the base of the pectoral fin they have definitely encouraged us to move that venting tool closer to the base of the pectoral fin uh and then uh it talks a lot about uh, a lot about how to do it and where to do it what not to do making sure that you're not poking that thing coming out of the stomach that uh that it's not his tongue yeah it's not his tongue it's not the swim bladder that's his stomach if you poke that thing that's protruding from the fish's stomach you will actually cause that fish to die a slow agonizing death and uh basically he swims down and looks healthy but he's not going to be able to eat well and uh he's not going to make it so never want to puncture that stomach or push the stomach back in you want to just vent it in the proper spot down by the pectoral fin uh, and we'll show you that in this video real quick Where his fin kind of comes down, you can use the pectoral fin as a target. You just 
lift up the scale and puncture right through the air and do a swim ladder, you'll hear the air escape. Once that air escapes, it's ready to go back down the bottom. That air escaping is what allows it to swim back down the bottom. If you don't vent the fish, it's going to float away at the top. So it's very important that you vent the fish properly, get them back in the water quickly. That way there's a place to go back down and live another day. That way you can catch them next year when it gets a little bit bigger. There you go. So talks a little bit about that in the video. And then when you're out there fishing with Will... Uh, on one of those long range trips, he'll show you how to do that in person as well. So definitely important to make sure you're properly venting those fish uh, to ensure that they swim back down there and survive for the next time you want to go out there and catch them. And uh, I did see a question about the venting tools. Uh, you can bring your own venting tool on the trip. You can buy a nice venting tool in our shop before the trip, or we'll give you a free venting tool there on the dock before we load. But you cannot get on a 39-hour trip or 44-hour trip without a venting tool uh, for every person in your party. So we make sure that we will check for it, and uh, we'll give you a free one if you don't want to get a uh, one from the shop or bring your own. But you do have to have a venting tool for those trips for that reason. But, uh, one thing I'll add to that that I see all the time, is he said it in the video, is knock that scale out of the way. Yeah, I see people with a, a little red grouper, and he's got small scales, and they try to just poke it straight in there, and you do still have to knock that scale out of the way before you poke the venting tool in there. Yeah, it makes it a whole heck of a lot easier to kind of lift up the scale a little bit or poke the scales away a little bit just so you can get that penetration going a little easier. Or you're just stabbing at him. Yeah, know? and you don't want to stab at him because what happens is when you're, when you're pushing it in there real hard, all of a sudden when it finally penetrates the skin – your venting tool is going to go too deep into that fish. You only want it to penetrate just a small amount. So a lot of times I'll even use my thumb and forefinger as a guide to make sure that venting tool, like uh, let's use this thing as an example. So I'll use the, my thumb and forefinger as a guide to make sure that I'm not going that deep into the fish. You just want it to go just a barely maybe a, a, a just half until you an hear inch the air or come quarter out, inch. Yeah. yeah. You don't want it to go very deep into the fish at all. Depending on the size of the fish, you just want that air to escape. And uh, that's that's the whole point. You want to make sure that fish is able to survive uh, to the next day. Or to the next time you try to catch them. Yeah. All right. So let's see here. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, the new website. I wanted to make sure we showed you guys that. Uh, but I think we should look at what we caught recently talk about that 40 or the 39 hour trip first oops wrong button guys <laughs> sorry about that uh you guys did catch some nice fish there's one of those big old gags yeah and this and we had a few calmer moments and this appears to be one of them it doesn't look very white cappy behind the boat so you know it calmed down a few times the fish bite a little better when it's calm like that we caught a few gags yeah that's a nice uh, gag the gags the gags were there to be had again yeah, they were ready to chew. It seems like the, the big gags have definitely been biting pretty good, huh? Yes, the, the gags are out there, and if it, all things go right this weekend, we may have a really good gag trip, I'm thinking. It's almost that time of year, guys. Oh, yeah. It just gets better and better from here. Mm-hmm. All right, let's see what other fish they got up there. Another big old gag. Yep, Jim got one. Danny got one. The most of the stern was they were able to hold bottom a little better on the stern the stern guys got on the groupers and uh actually there was a guy fishing the bow too a couple of guys fished the bow and it was wet up there you were getting some spray john martin fished up there too but mm -hmm. they all caught fish everybody fishing on the bow had a nice stringer of fish yeah it definitely seemed like uh, uh, uh the people who were able to fish through it and were able to hold bottom caught some nice quality fish mm -hmm. that's a nice gag there's a big mangrove, too. Yep. Some good size to the mangroves again this weekend. Yeah, decent size. Man the mangroves are getting bigger. There's still some small ones, you know, 13 inches in there. But there's this is it doesn't look as big as it is. That was probably a six-pounder right there. That's what I would call that one. It's a big mangrove stamp. You know what's funny, dude? So for that Fox 13 thing that we did the other day where we were grilling up those mangrove snapper, mm -hmm. so we filmed the uh, majority of that ahead of the uh cooking segment 
and we used those fish from that uh, 44 hour last weekend. Yep. So I got those fish from you Sunday morning. We uh, filleted them up, grilled them, and I didn't really look at the weather and consider the weather that it was going to get so rough. So we filleted up all those fish, grilled them all up, ate them, no big deal. And then I looked at the weather and I'm like, well, I don't know if we're going to have another trip before I have to get more fish for the this. I had to cook the fish again uh, Friday afternoon, <laughs> uh, Friday night, really. And uh, sure enough, the weather went bad. We didn't have a trip Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And so I'm sitting there Friday like, where am I going to get some fish for this trip? I had to go to Don's Dock and buy a mangrove snapper. <laughs> yeah, I had to go buy a mangrove snapper yeah, off a commercial boat. But a three and a half pound mangrove snapper, like not even a, it was a, a nice mangrove snapper. But they gave me a discount, and it still was thirty-eight dollars. Oh yeah! And you can catch twenty of those on a on a thirty-nine hour trip. Yep. I mean, if you catch twenty thirty-five dollar fish, that's pretty impressive. So I mean, definitely the amount of fish that you can catch on a thirty-nine hour trip definitely outweighs what you would spend in a fish market trying to buy them. Definitely, definitely. Especially I found out one, firsthand. <laughs> like one big grouper, you know, it's very expensive. Too. Yeah, yeah, $27 a pound <laughs> is what they got for the grouper. It was crazy. Definitely some uh, crazy prices, so a lot more fun to go out there and catch them yourself. It is. Yeah. But uh, there's look at the size of that thing. That's the red grouper from the Tuesday 10-hour trip. That's a monster red grouper, huh? Yeah, he's, he looks very happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> he was very pumped about that red grouper. That is a big red grouper. I mean, for a 10-hour all-day trip, that's a monster. Yeah, it is. I mean, he's definitely holding out a little bit, but you can see the gut on that thing. Yeah, that's a fat fish. That was a fat, big old red grouper from the 10-hour all-day. So I'm hearing they're in that area right now, in the all-day area. Yeah. Big time. Yeah, anywhere from about 70 to about 120 foot, it seems like that red grouper bite's getting pretty good. The Flying Hub 2 had a, an 8-hour charter around that depth and did pretty well. The Hub's been doing really good around that depth. And uh, the 10-hour's been seeing some nice red grouper, too. So, mm -hmm. Plus these hogfish, you got to love the hogfish bite. Uh, it's been going pretty well for us as well. So catching those hogs. Gags are starting to come in. We're not really seeing a ton of them yet in those near shore waters. They kind of are, are mostly, we're doing well on those gags offshore. And uh, we're seeing a lot of gags. Uh, some people are getting lucky with them around the bay, Tampa Bay. But not a ton of gags filling in the near shore waters yet. But it's only going to get better and better as time progresses. Now, this is a pretty large mangrove snapper for the near shore waters. We've been seeing some pretty big mangrove snapper filling in there around uh, anywhere from 50 to about 100 foot uh, in the near shore waters, which is a pretty nice size fish uh, for shallower waters. That's definitely kind of close to a big overnight mangrove. That is a nice mangrove there. Yeah. And they like the, they like the wintertime months too. They come in the shallow water in the cold in the colder yeah. months as well. And it's so funny because three, four, five years ago, we didn't really do that well on the mangrove snapper other than the wintertime. That's when we saw the bulk of the mangrove snapper. Yep. And it seems like in the last few years, it's kind of shifting that cold weather months, we're seeing a really good push of mangroves. Well, yeah, we are right it's, now. It's very strange. The last, I'd say the last two winters in a row, and it looks like we're going to see the same thing this winter. Yeah, yeah, they were scattered on the overnight this summer. We got them, but you know didn't destroy them mm -hmm. a few times you know but now they're picking up right now it's strange how that's happening they're changing the behavior as we as we see it <laughs> nice little red grouper from the hub the wounded warriors project came out they've done a couple trips with us to celebrate veterans day and uh, they've been coming back uh, a few other times and uh, doing a bunch of trips and uh, definitely enjoying fishing with those guys and uh, they're catching some nice ones on the hub there. Captain Garrett's been taking them out, and they've been tearing up some nice big gags and mangroves and lane snapper. There's one of the bigger gags from the Wounded Warriors Project trips. It's a nice one. That is a good one. Yeah. Definitely a lot of happy uh, veterans celebrating Veterans Day with the Wounded Warriors Project. Speaking of veterans, uh, for those of you who were paying attention to our Hubbard's Marina Facebook page, we did have a special Veterans Day giveaway uh, to win a 39-hour fishing trip 
uh, with us at Hubbard's Marina. And how that worked was uh, if you went to the Hubbard's Marina Facebook page, uh, you could have seen that uh, on our Hubbard's Marina Facebook page for Veterans Day, we did a special Veterans Day giveaway. This was also uh, on our uh, Instagram page as well. So you could have found it on our Hubbard's Marina Facebook or the Hubbard's Marina Instagram uh, by just watching our page. Uh, we offered a special Veterans Day giveaway. And that Veterans Day giveaway, all you had to do was like us on Facebook, follow us on YouTube, subscribe to us on YouTube, and like us on Instagram, and then tag the veterans. So there it was. November 11th was that giveaway. Uh, we started it actually on Veterans Day, I think. Uh, and we have picked a winner. Long yes, story, have, yes. long story short. All that to say, we picked a winner. Don't don't know why I had to scroll to it. Didn't really make sense after I got there. But. <laughs> Someone has won this contest. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, picked uh, three random names off Facebook. We picked three random names off Instagram. We put the six names in a random name generator. And long story short, a winner has been chosen. And that winner for a free 39-hour fishing trip is Daniel Mercer had to look at my notes again. So Daniel Mercer, if you are listening, you won a free 39 hour trip uh, in the Veterans Day giveaway. If you yourself are not a veteran, call me, uh, shoot me a message. Uh, you can gift it to a veteran friend of yours or it's going to the second place winner uh, because this was a Veterans Day giveaway. It is meant for a veteran. But we have our own free trips to give away tonight for the live stream show. So I think I think it's time to give away a five-hour half day for two. Uh, if you win a free trip from the live show, you do have to uh, text us at 727-393-1947. Uh, text us your home address within about, excuse me, 10, 15 minutes um, to claim your free trip. That way we know you are watching live because uh, we want to make sure those who win are live viewers. Now, as you know, if you watch our show uh, from week to week, in order to win those free trips, you do have to check out uh, Hubbard's Marina's Facebook page, comment on the video at least one time, and you're entered to win. All you have to do is comment once on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook uh, video. So go to Hubbard's Marina on Facebook. Find our live video, comment one time. You can watch all you want on YouTube and still be eligible to win. All you have to do is comment once on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook page. Does that make sense? I... No. <laughs> all right. I, to I toned you out a little bit. <laughs> Put them on the spot. <laughs> all right. Let's see who won a free five-hour half-day trip. All right. You've had a long weekend, Will. I'll let that one slide. I was reading comments. Oh, okay. <laughs> good, good excuse. Yeah. Uh, something happened because it's supposed to be picking random names right now. All right, so we're going to try this one again. That was weird. That was. <laughs> it just went blank. It was like, yeah, I'm not going to pick a random winner tonight. I don't feel like it. <laughs> Let's try it again. Five hour half day for two. There it goes. Second time was a charm. Joseph Heath from Lakeland. Uh, you have been the lucky winner, Joseph Heath from Lakeland, uh, to win that five hour half day for two. Uh, again, all you have to do is text us at 727 393 one nine four seven text that main office number your home address to claim that free trip uh and that number is listed on our website everybody every week's always like can you post the number it's right on our website that's our main office number so hopefully you can find that one easily hopefully you know it by heart like me <laughs> i knew it yeah you knew it <laughs> there you go <laughs> All right, so let's see here. We talked about uh, the photos. How about that new website? Have you have you seen the new website yet? Not well, at all. No. Oh man, you're missing out. We got the new website up and running. Look at that thing. 
It's brand new. Just launched it this past week. We've been, or uh, this past weekend, we've been working the bugs out slowly. Had a few little weird things. The most exciting thing that we have launched is this little tool over here. That little hourglass, it's black right now. It's not very big. We're working on the sizing of this, but this is cool. You can click that little hourglass and just type whatever you're wondering about. Whether you want to check the weather for your trip, just type in the weather there, and it's going to hopefully bring us right up to the weather links page. There it is. It makes the site really easy to navigate because you can find exactly what you're searching for, whether it's the weather for your trip, uh, trolling information, whatever you're looking for, our site is now much easier to navigate. So hopefully you guys enjoy the new website. If you haven't seen it already, check it out because uh, we are hoping that it made your life a lot easier. Uh, and please give us some feedback. We always love to hear from you guys. The idea is that you like it more, so if you don't like it, let us know. Shoot us a message. Shoot me a text. But a uh, few people did ask about the weather, uh, so I did want to mention it. Look at that, Will. The week looks great. I mean, beautiful. We haven't had a nice weather window like this in probably two weeks. This is our near shore forecast. This is the 10-mile buoy. Nothing over two foot until we get really into Sunday, November 24th. That's a whole week. That's seven days away. So very excited about that weather window. If you go back and we're going to look at the uh, 39 hour forecast, but it's the same. Don't see anything really tough at all. Anything over three foot until Sunday, November 24th. And even then, it's not that bad, and we'll already be at the dock from our overnight. And it's coming from the north, too, you know, and that's our way home. So Yeah, yeah. it's going to blow you right home. Mm -hmm. So that's perfect, and you're going to be able to fish pretty much right ahead of the front during that next 39-hour uh, trip. Gonna be, it's going to be a good trip, I have a feeling. Yeah, it, it looks like a really good trip, according to the weather. And uh, you'll have the ability to get where you're going because it's going to be nice and calm on the ride out. Uh, so definitely this weekend's 39 hour trip, the stars are aligning. And speaking of stars aligning, this week's uh, 12 hour extreme trip, Captain Garrett is running it. Captain Garrett has those gags dialed in for sure. And uh, he's excited to run the Flying Hub 2 out there this Wednesday. Got great weather for it, like two foot seas. And uh, he's excited to go out there and catch a lot of big gag grouper Tuesday. So Definitely excited about that. So uh, if you haven't already thought about it, maybe think about that 12-hour extreme trip this Wednesday with Captain Garrett. Uh, I want to show the recipe video uh, from our Fox 13 segment, but I think the last video we played, the sound wasn't that good. Some people were commenting. I don't know what's going on with the sound with my video. Uh, that I played earlier. So I'm just going to drop the uh, URL to our cooking segment in the chat for you guys. So after the show, you can check out that cooking segment and the recipe if you're interested. Uh, if you're not interested, you can ignore it. But uh, I did drop that in the chat for you guys if you want to check out that Hubbard family secret recipe. Uh, and I can just mention it real quick. I guess I can pull it up. We don't have to watch the video. We can pull it up. Now I'm thinking, Wilbo. And I'm sitting next to the chef extraordinaire right here, man. Will can cook. I do some cooking myself. Oh, yeah, you can cook. I've seen you cook on the boat. I've seen you cook all over. And uh, you're pretty good behind a grill as well. So I think you could have given me a run for my money here. I, I don't cook much fish, though, honestly. You know? Yeah. I should cook a lot of fish, but I don't cook much fish. Yeah. Yeah, I cook a lot of steaks, though. Mm -hmm. So this is the uh, grilled mangrove snapper ingredients. Obviously, you need some mangrove snapper. Uh, mayonnaise. Basically, you take that filet of fish that Will's going to filet up for you after your 39-hour trip. You take Hellman's mayo, real important, got to be Hellman's mayo. Uh, take that Hellman's mayo. Uh, well, first of all, you pre prepare your fish by uh, just rinsing it off. Uh, rinsing it off pretty thoroughly, but you don't want to take all that fish 
uh, taste away. So just rinse it off to where there's no fish blood or slime or scales on that filet. And then just pat dry it. You don't want it to be dripping wet. And then take your mayo, put a little light coat on that fish filet. Then garlic powder, onion powder, garlic salt, and then Everglades seasoning, or you can use Old Bay seasoning, or you can even use blackening seasoning, and then salt and pepper. That's the secret recipe. And a lot of people might be sitting there thinking, why the mayo? Do you put mayo on your fish? I, I've never put mayo on my fish, but I... Bro, <laughs> you're missing out. Yeah. You've never done it? No, never. Oh, man. So the mayo, what it does is it traps the tenderness and the moisture in that fish, and it makes the edges crispy. I thought everybody did this. I'm just recently finding out in the last year or two that this is kind of a weird thing that my family's been doing. Hmm. But growing up, that's how my dad cooked fish every time he cooked fish. Always a light coat of mayo, seasoning, popped it on the grill. You can also use the same recipe when you're broiling fish in the broiler. Either way, you want a really, really hot grill or a really hot oven. You just cook the first side of the fish for a minute, minute and a half, depending on how thick it is, just to get it opaque. And then once it starts turning opaque, you flip it real fast and you cook it on that second side. So that second side's two minutes, three minutes, and uh, you let it cook through and uh, you take it off and eat it as quick as you can. I'll do like a crispy outside fish. That's important to me. What's your fish. favorite recipe? And I I wouldn't say I have a favorite recipe, but uh, I eat I eat sushi. I eat some mangroves every now and then. I I generally give my fish away before yeah. I go home, but if I catch any. Yeah. But I would say blackened or seared in a pan. Yeah, blackened's my, good too. Mm -hmm. But uh, sushi is the best. So, yeah, yeah. I, I eat more sushi than anything. I agree to that. Shout out to Osaka. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's my favorite sushi place. I love that place. Captain Frank's there right now if any of you guys want to go. <laughs> He's 20 sakis deep. <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, definitely sushi is one of my favorite ways to go. I wish I could make my own sushi. I'm not very, I'm not, I don't have enough patience for that. Nah, it's, I've tried it. You've tried it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, you've had the sushi parties before. I just started eating the uh, raw fish now instead of making the <laughs> He went the total other way. No grill, no broiler, no sushi rice. Just yeah, eating it raw. I just huh? eat the ingredients now. <laughs> <laughs> Mix them in your mouth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, that's funny. Well, share your favorite recipes in the comments. Maybe someone has a better one over there, but definitely mayo is my favorite. The mayo makes it crispy. It makes that moisture lock in there, and it tends to really, really hold that seasoning well. So whatever you season the fish with tends to stick to the mayo. The mayo cooks off, but the seasoning sticks to the fish. So it's a really, really good secret recipe. Uh, if you want to steal it, you're more than welcome to. But let's give away a 10-hour trip. Let's keep these guys on their toes. We're giving, giving trips away a little earlier tonight. Uh, yeah. Keeping everybody on their toes, hopefully. So 10-hour all day for two. We still got that 39-hour trip to give away as well. So stay tuned for that. But 10-hour all day for two. See who the lucky winner is on this. Robert Bazart. Nice. From Apollo Beach. Another local. Robert, thanks for watching there, buddy. Um, he's been out with a couple couple of our trips. So we were having a lot of uh, people from out of state winning the last couple weeks. And it seems like we're kind of on a local streak all of a sudden there with the go. winners. So, uh, changing it up on you guys, R total random selection, but uh, the random selector is changing it up on you guys. Um, so, we talked a little bit about uh, that recipe there. One thing I wanted to mention was our trips for next year. A lot of people are asking about our 39-hour and 44-hour trips for this coming year, 2020. You excited? Very excited for 2020. We're planning it. We're planning it. The schedule's coming, guys. The 12-hour extreme trips, the 39-hour trips, the 44-hour trips, 
those scheduled dates are coming. We're getting them all set up. We're massaging that schedule, fine tuning it, if you will. And uh, we will release that schedule here probably uh, just after Thanksgiving. Our goal is to release it around December 1st, probably going to be December 2nd, since December 1st is a Sunday, uh, probably going to be sometime December 2nd, midday uh, or mid morning. So stay tuned to our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, our Instagram, our newsletter, everything. Stay tuned. Set your alerts because we're going to be announcing that 2020, 39, 44, and 12 hour trip schedule coming soon. And the website makes it real easy to stay tuned now because our latest fishing reports and everything's right on the home page. So if you haven't checked out the new website, make sure you do it after the show. Let us know how you like it. You can sign up for our newsletter right there. It makes it super easy now to sign up for your newsletters. And it uh, shows the latest newsletters. Oh, second favorite part. Dude, this is what I've always wanted to be able to... If you're at home and you go fishing with us a lot, this probably isn't that exciting to you, but it's exciting to me. And if you don't go fishing a lot, this is going to be pretty cool for you. Check this thing out. So when you're on our website, obviously the fishing reports and our latest live sh show is at the bottom of the website. That's pretty cool. But when you're on the website, you can click reservations. I've always wanted this. And for some reason, I was told it couldn't happen. And finally, I talked to the right person and they made it happen. Look at that. I've got a calendar. So you can click what month you want to go fishing. And it brings up the calendar. You can click what day you want to go. And it shows everything we offer that day. There you go. Finally, <laughs> finally, you can see every fishing trip that's offered that day. So let's say you're coming into town. You can only go fishing December 31st. That's the only day you can go. You can click December 31st and see every fishing trip option. So, very excited about that. Uh, might seem pretty minuscule to you guys at home, but it's going to make your lives easier, hopefully. And all of our lives easier, too. Easier for you to make those reservations. And uh, also, on the note of next year, uh, 2020, our 5-hour trips, our 10-hour trips... Those are in the schedule already. So if you want to book a five or 10 hour trip, you can book those now. It's only the 12 hour, the 39 hour, the 44 hour. Those are the trips you can't book until that schedule is released, which will be probably uh, right around December 1st. You excited for that? Oh, yeah. Very excited. Give lot, me a good year. A lot of trips and uh, red snapper season <laughs> next year. Red snapper season is probably going to start about the same time, but I think it's going to be a little longer. Really? Yeah, I mean, I this red snapper season, we lost some trips due to rough weather. Yeah. And that was true across the whole Gulf. So I don't see the quota for four higher wreck anglers being met. So I would imagine they're going to give us even a little bit uh, longer season, probably at least two to three, maybe even four extra days. So this past year, we had 62 red snapper days. I'm gambling on probably like 66. Man. Yeah, so that was a good season. A lot of extra 39 hour trips in there for you guys. Uh, we talked about the weather. I think we covered everything, man. Did you see any good questions? I, I saw on the cooking subject, I saw ceviche a couple of times. Ooh, ceviche is badass. Mm -hmm. Ceviche is very good, and I'm mm -hmm. you can make it out of most fish. I think I saw you have a really good ceviche re recipe. Why don't you share that bad boy? I uh, ceviche is very simple. You can do it in a lot of different ways, but the basic ceviche is lemon juice or lime juice, red onion, green onion. Am I right, right there? Right cilantro. <laughs> no green onion. If you if you like green onion, cilantro and salt. So red onion, cilantro, salt, and then lemon, lime. Yeah, and you can add tomatoes. You can add whatever else you want to it, but the, that's the Pineapples. basic ingredients. Holler at mm -hmm. you, boy. <laughs> that's good stuff right there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, obviously, you need some type of fish. Yeah, yeah. fish. But any fish goes and in cilantro. 
so lots you've said cilantro a couple times <laughs> is that your favorite part no, like some people don't like cilantro i really like cilantro for sure. <laughs> apparently <laughs> <laughs> uh so i mean i think uh i've had yellowtail ceviche i've had uh squid octopus tuna grouper What's your favorite one? I've had as low as porgy ceviche. Oh, that sounds good, actually. No, it was good. It was good. Yeah. Very good. I mean, I think anything that you catch out there that fresh mm -hmm. and uh, and make it fresh, and uh, especially once you bleed it and put it in that brine and get it a little firm, it's good stuff, man. Yeah, it is. I'll never forget those uh, sushi trips. Remember the... Uh, the uh, the Kaizen Sushi uh, private charters? Yep. Oh, man. May Rio rest in peace. He had some awesome trips. He the, was, yeah, he was a character. He was the man. Had a great following. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's this sushi restaurant in Tampa off of Bears Avenue called Kaizen Sushi. And that they used to take their regulars out fishing on 39-hour private charters. Uh, it was like in the summer, wasn't it? Yeah, it was just before Red Snapper season. Yeah, right? it was, oh yeah, it was Memorial Day weekend mm -hmm. in May every mm -hmm. year. And uh, they would catch, uh, whether it's a bonita, a yellowtail, and it, at, some, at some point during the trip, Rio, the main sushi guy, uh, the guy who planned the trip, would catch a fish and stop fishing. And whenever he set his rod down, I was on him like white on rice, man. I was following him around because I knew what he was doing. He would stop fishing and he would prepare a fish and either do ceviche or some type of sushi with it. It was always crazy. Yeah, it was general or, or sashimi. It was generally a uh, bonita. I they wanted that. bonita. Yeah, they and, love bonita. Uh, yeah, and, and the, they turn that bonita. I'll tell that story to anybody. They turn that bonita into one of the best sushi pieces I've ever had. Mm -hmm. And they would even leave a little bit of the bloodline on it. I remember that he left a little bit of bloodline on there for flavor. Right? Wow, <laughs> yeah. but I it mean, was good. They, you put it really, in really good. good sauce. It was excellent. Yeah, it was crazy for sure. You just never know, man. I miss him. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, they didn't do that trip this year. Yeah. All right, let's see what other questions we have. Let's check our text, Will. Who texted us? Let's see here. Someone's trying to book a December 39-hour trip. You can book on our website, or you can wait until we open tomorrow you can uh, call us and book over the phone uh, we are open from 6 a.m to 7 p.m this time of year uh, you can book over the phone anytime or you can book on our website there Let's see what other text messages we have uh, are flying fish or ballyhoo available we do sell frozen ballyhoo in the shop i mean i don't really suggest trolling the frozen ballyhoo too much i think we do better on the Rapalas or those those new Nomad DTX minnows, man. They're, those they, are they are bad to them. I think they might last a little longer than the Rapalas do too. Yeah, they look like they last longer. They're uh, they look like they're just better built, and mm -hmm. it seems like they troll better. But the Rapalas are still catching plenty of fish. The Rapalas are great. The one downfall of the Rapala is sometimes you catch a big fish on it or a violent fish and they'll uh, mess that lure up where it doesn't troll as well anymore. Yeah, and the DTX, the Nomad Minnows seem to be lasting a little longer, but they are more expensive too. I would imagine. They look more expensive, yeah. <laughs> they are pretty though. But uh, as far as cut bait, if they're talking about cut bait, you don't need flying fish or ballyhoo for cut bait mm -hmm. out there. I think, he, I assume he means trolling. Yeah, okay. I don't know. I don't I've know. never seen anybody troll a flying fish, I guess. No. Maybe he's talking about cut bait. I don't know. But we typically fish cut bait. I mean, thread fins, what we provide on the boat, that's what I fish with. That's what Will fishes with. And uh, we catch some good fish out there. But uh, some people might bring cigar minnows or sardines. Uh, what are some other odd cut baits you see out mm, there? I would say really the best thing, I would say that th the thread fins work out there that we bring. And if you bring the small whole squids, that yeah. can catch you more fish. Not not necessarily big fish, but more heads and tails. Hmm. Stringer fish, you know. Stringer fish. And then the uh, bonita shrimps, they yeah. work pretty well. Bonita works well out there. Oh, yeah. Don't forget about the bonita shrimps. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> uh, someone asked about posting the dates for January and February 39-hour trips via text. As we mentioned, those will be posted Sometime around December 1st, probably December 2nd. 
uh, mid morning. Uh, let's see here. That one's about changing dates. Someone asked about uh, my son Jack. He is getting big. He's taken after his father. He's two and a half months old, and he's growing out of six to nine month clothing. <laughs> yeah, boy. He's 14 and a half pounds. He's a monster. Yes, sir. Yeah. Starting to get a little heavy there. All right. I think that was uh, all our questions via text. Let's see if we have any other questions here. I mean, I think as far as trolling dead baits, we don't really do that that much. We troll just no. mainly the Rapalas, the the lipped plugs, the tr the skirted plugs, the spoons behind the planers. I mean the 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 planers seem to be the trick. Yeah, plan especially for kingfish, bonita the uh, the bonita strips make you hungry. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, but offshore they. Uh... <laughs> The, the bonita strips do make me hungry. We were just talking about bonita sushi, guys. Back <laughs> off. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we do better on the lures and diving lures, especially. You'll catch fish on the topwater lures, but nine out of ten times it's a bonita. Mm -hmm. On those skirted plugs skirted up top. Skirted plugs or ballyhoo or whatever you might be trolling on top. Yeah. I mean, I remember a big mahi. Yeah, or a big caught. mahi yeah. at the right time of year. Yeah, we see the Mahis up top, mm -hmm. uh, and occasionally a Wahoo, but yeah, I would say definitely mostly Bonita up top. I have seen a Wahoo on top, too. Yeah, some big big Wahoo. Mm -hmm. Typically, the, the whatever hits on the surface is going to be either a really trophy fish, or it's going to be a Bonita. Yeah, or a Barracuda. <laughs> or a Barracuda. Yeah, yeah touche. That happened to me on that 44-hour charter. I had, I had 10 trolling rods out. I was all pumped up about it. Caught Benita, 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 big ba uh, big Barracuda, and I was like, <laughs> "Screw this, I'm going to bed." <laughs> yeah, I finally was, got one, and it was a Cuda. Yeah, finally, I was like, "Oh, something on a Benita. Oh, it's take a drag. It's a big fish, it was like <laughs> six and a half foot Barracuda. It was awesome." <laughs> All right. Uh, some people are asking about our longer trips. Uh, we just don't have them. We're not doing anything longer than 44-hour trips this coming year. We're sticking to our 39- and 44-hour trips. And the reason why is simply this. Our 39-hour trips, our 44-hour trips, we catch a ton of fish. We catch plenty of nice fish, plenty of quality fish, and we can run trips in pretty much any weather. We don't have to cancel trips. When we cancel trips, it's a lose-lose for us. When we cancel a trip, you're upset we didn't take you. We're upset. Will's upset he can't feed his family and work. And I'm upset because uh, the business isn't operating. So canceling trips, everybody's upset about that. We hate canceling trips. And those 63-hour trips, uh, those deep drop four-day trips, you need perfect weather. You can't fish in a 1,000 foot of water in the seas that you fished a 39 hour this no. weekend. I mean, you need almost perfect conditions. And perfect conditions don't come around four days in a row very often. In these 63 hour trips, we gotta plan 12 months in advance and just hope for the best with the weather. So, so often we were planning these trips, getting enough people to go, getting all excited, getting all our tackle, and then come the day of the trip, it's four or five foot seas and we gotta cancel. And in four and five foot seas, we could have ran a 39 hour trip. We could have put a mountain of fish on the back deck and everybody would have left happy. Yep. Instead of taking 14, 15 guys traveling from California, from Canada, getting all excited, spending $1,000 on electric reels, and then us having to cancel the trip. They're upset. We're upset. No one's happy. So screw it. We're sticking to the 39 hours. It gets rougher out there in the 60-hour area. It yeah. gets way rougher out there. And it's just not something that, uh, it's not something that's worked for us. We tried it. Uh, we didn't have a ton of interest in it. And now that we're not offering it anymore, it seems like we have more interest, <laughs> which is a little frustrating. But the new website doesn't even offer it. Uh, if you go to the new website, uh, under fishing trips, We've got short range, we got our five hour half days, mid range, we got the 10 hour all days, the 12 hour night. 
long range you right there baby 12 hour extreme 39 hour 44 hour the 63 hour has been erased and you'll notice the 12 hour day trip has been erased no more 12 hour party boats trips for the day trips for red snapper we've just got the 12 hour night trip on the friendly for the mangroves and we've got the 12 hour extreme trip on the flying hub too so we've deleted a total of three trips next year we've eliminated the 63 hour the excuse me the 12 hour day trip uh and the five hour night half day trip all three trips that got a lot of people upset didn't catch a lot of fish and i didn't like uh so we're focusing on what we do well we're focusing on what you like and uh we're taking your feedback we're learning we're growing with you so hopefully at the end of the year we'll have some exciting news to announce yeah that would that sounds exciting <laughs> Always a pleasure, Will. <laughs> All right, so uh, I think we did the best we could here. We didn't get a lot of uh, questions answered. Did you see any questions you want to answer before we cut this off? Uh, not off the top of my head, no. Yeah. Well, let's, I mean, give some wisdom here, Will. All Share right, some so wisdom. Hit them, hit them with something they're never going <laughs> to never gonna ever want to forget. Here we go. Uh, it's getting to be a really good time again year to come fish gags on the 39 hour or the extreme trip and even a little later you a private charter on the hub the gags are going to be coming in close to shore but we got some good trips coming up on the 39 hour it might be rough weather out there but the gags are going to come through there and they like live bait this time of year live bait there you go that was it they like big pinfish this time of year Amen to that. They'll eat cut bait and stuff always, but you'll get a bite with the big pinfish. Right I was now. talking. I was talking to a guy from the thirty nine hour today. That that bigger guy uh, who had the GoPro on his head. Oh yeah, Chris. Yeah, Chris. He's a good dude. And I was talking to a few other guys, Scott and uh, Dan, and a lot of those guys were saying they got the best action on those bigger dead baits, those bigger thread fins. Oh yeah, they like the big thread fins too. Yeah, the big thread fins, but. I believe you, man. I like dropping a big live bait for those gags. And I've been getting some bites, and they're hitting the live baits hard right now. And um, I, f I feel like my favorite bait is like one of those little knob die porgies or the little head porgies. Some of those fish that you catch catch while you're out there fishing. Those yeah. little those little one two pound baits that you catch during the night. Mm -hmm. Throwing one of those in your live well, vent it. As long as it's not one that has a size limit or bag limit, like you can't use lane snapper or vermilion snapper for bait, but some of those species that uh, don't have a size limit or bag limit, you can use those for gag baits. And I remember the biggest gag that I've seen caught recently, Jig Head Ed, he caught it on a little head porgy. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they make and some a good grunt bait. Or a grunt. They called a couple of goggle eyes this trip. Oh yeah? Yeah. Caught them? What yeah. do you mean caught them? Caught them with chicken rigs. Oh really? Yeah. Huh. And uh, I forgot I ever saw what they did with them, but those one made great baits too. You can catch Blue nice runners baits when you're too. out there. Blue runners too. They make really good grouper baits. Mm -hmm. A lot of people use them for kingfish, but I would use that thing for a grouper bait. Oh yeah. Uh, so we answered a few questions. <laughs> We're gonna go back through and answer some more questions. Uh, we definitely got to 300 live viewers there for a little while. Uh, and someone's going to win a free 39 hour fishing trip with Mr. Will here. Uh, and Garrett Hubbard or Brian Holland are two 39 hour extraordinaires. Uh, what in the world? This random comment picker is giving me some trouble tonight, man. <laughs> We're going to do our 39-hour drawing, uh, but before we do that, guys, I want to make sure everybody can uh, remember to check us out on Instagram. Make sure you're following us on Instagram. Make sure you check out Floribama Shore. If you watch MTV, if you're into that kind of thing, Floribama Shore just kicked off a new season. You might see something pretty cool there, uh, so definitely check out Floribama Shore this season. Also, Friday mornings, 8.15 a.m., don't forget to watch Fox 13, our good catch segments, live every Friday morning. We'll see you next week, 8.30 p.m., for another live stream show. Come join this guy this Friday for the overnight trip. The weather looks awesome for that. 
Uh, joined Captain Garrett Hubbard, my uh, cousin and grouper fishing extraordinaire, on that 12-hour extreme trip this Wednesday. We've got great fishing trip uh, Tuesday. We've got a 10-hour all-day, five-hour half-day. Uh, we don't have a half day to t- uh, we don't have a half day fishing trip tomorrow. Unfortunately, this weather is really killing us right now. The fishing just really kind of stunk. I mean, today I think they caught fifteen fish on the half day. Ooh. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's tough after bad weather. I mean, it was ten foot seas yesterday. That water is mud. It looked literally looked like the mud in my backyard mm-hmm. uh, in the past today. So those fish just aren't biting. So we don't have a half day trip tomorrow. Uh, but that will give that time, that water time to cool, uh, calm down and clear up. I think fishing, sh- or, uh, I think Tuesday should be pretty good fishing. You got the 10 hour, the five hour. So come join us Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Weather looks great. Don't forget if you're too busy to go fishing. You're just too busy. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <I'm> getting there. <laughs> All right. Let's see who won a 39 hour fishing trip. Let's see who did it. Let's see who won. 39 hour fishing trip goes to Sean Paul Kelly. Catching the big ones with Hubbards again. Well, now you get another chance. Sean Paul Kelly, you just won a 39 hour fishing trip, bud. Appreciate y'all tuning in. A few people did ask about Black Friday specials. We do have Black Friday specials coming up. We're going to have our special 20% off gift certificates. You can buy up to $1,000 in gift certificates for only $800. Oh, there you go. Yeah, 20% off. Can't beat that. And then also, we're going to have lots of Black Friday deals in the shop. Uh, Those will kick off Black Friday. So come see us. Remember, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too darn busy. Have a great night tonight, guys. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us. Appreciate you being on the show, Wilbo. Hey, good seeing you, D. Have a good night, guys.